Hi everyone. So given that this is the final video that I'm making in 2023, I figured I'd do a recap, uh, a summary of the best content that I've created this year, the courses I've created, and my personal lessons learned. So I'll start there. Um, and I say personal lessons, I really mean personal lessons as applied to business. So this year uh, was a big year in my personal life in that I moved, immigrated to another country. After having been in the United States for more than 40 years um, and in San Francisco for 20 years, uh, my wife and I decided to move to Mexico. So we did this year. Uh, it took us several months of packing and decluttering uh, because we were we, we don't we're not going to put anything in storage uh, except for one box at each of our parents homes uh, and uh, but everything else is you know had to go and we um, basically moved to Mexico with only six luggages and two animals um, and so it was a, a big year of transition talk about uh, radical life change uh, in different ways. And one of those ways was that giving being in a new country means that I had to get used to the, you know, big, uh, a big misconception about Mexico is that it's dangerous because of the cartels. And I have not found that to be true at all. Uh, I live in a place where I have not seen a single hint of any cartel activity and the crime has been i mean as far as i could tell just about non-existent safer here than i felt in san francisco california um and anyway but what is dangerous here uh that i did not expect is the bacteria <laughs> and the bugs uh, so i've had two bouts of being bedridden and just in the in the Three months of being here, I've been bedridden twice for about a you know about a week at a time. Once was with a major stomach bug that I don't know what I ate or I was very liberal with what I was eating uh, the first couple months. I you know didn't think of that very much, and so I got a major uh, stomach illness, and uh, it took me out for for a week for sure. I was very nauseated for days, and I just couldn't get out of bed barely. And the second bout of being bedridden was having a foot infection because I I didn't attend to, I think it's either a bug bite, that's what the doctor suggested perhaps, or it was, it was a cut on my foot that I didn't attend to anyway. Is the bacteria and bugs down here are definitely more robust, you might say. But hopefully now that I've gone through those experiences, I'm more um, immune to, to future instances like this. But the business lesson that I want to share with you from, from, from these personal experiences is that um, yet again, I learned the power of consistency. Meaning, despite my major life change of decluttering a 20 year home and moving to another country, I still remain consistent with creating content and with launching my offers. And I, it was a very financially successful year for me as a result, and also a year of continuing to grow uh, and nurture my warm audience. And so I, I want to, again, encourage you, you know, whatever is going on in your life, the lesson of consistency is always there to learn. Of course, I could have taken like the year off really, or, or taken months off as I moved and everything. But nope, I still, you know, I, I think I took, uh, I, we, we physically moved during one of the weeks where I had already planned to take a content sabbatical, but that was the one, you know, and, and by the way, consistency applies to taking breaks as well, because this year I took more weeks off than I did in any previous year. I took a week off every five weeks or so. I took one week off of no content creation, no client meetings, no group meetings, 
And I still worked a little bit on my business during that time, did some maintenance work, did some long-term planning, but much, much lighter schedule during my content sabbatical weeks. So that was very consistent. About every five weeks, I, I, I had that. I had one of those weeks. In the coming year, next year, I'm going to do it every four weeks. So I'm going to take about 13, uh, 13 weeks off next year. Uh, so more than more than even this year. And so consistency applies to both, to both keeping focused at work, okay, no, no matter what's going on in life around you, and then also keeping consistent with taking breaks from work, no matter how much momentum you think you have. That's really, again, I've learned that lesson again this year. It all builds up. And as a result, my business is very healthy and very consistent despite the big transitions. And I hope to inspire you to also do the same because consistent. Now, I, I you know saw one of my friends say, oh, you know, we can't be productive all year long. We're not machines. Well, obviously we're not machines, but however, we are trainable creatures. We are pliable and malleable. And we have a consciousness which allows us to make decisions and to shape ourselves into whatever kind of organic being that we wish to be. I believe that fully. And the those who are saying, oh, I, it's just impossible that I'm productive all year long, or you know, the, the, of, you know, seeing that of themselves, is by definition um, stewing in a very strong limiting belief about themselves. Now, Again, when I say productive, I'm productive all year long, I've already told you that it includes being consistent with breaks, breaks during the year, but also breaks every single day. I take more breaks every day than probably you do. I take three to four naps a day, every day, three to four naps, three is a minimum, four naps is sometimes as well. And I don't fall asleep during all of those naps, but I, um, I certainly uh, am laying down for 15, 20 minutes 25 minutes sometimes just being quiet, just relaxing, just enjoying, relaxing, whether or not I fall asleep or not. Anyway, I've done that for years. And during each hour, I do multiple energy reboots to bring myself back to the remembrance that uh, essentially none of this matters, uh, that we are all deeply loved. We are deeply, magnificently held despite what seems to be going on around us, this, despite the seeming negativity around us. Our souls are deeply secure, and we are here to play, to create, to learn, to grow through sometimes difficult experiences, obviously, um, but through you know creativity, through uh, learning more about our authentic energy signature and expressing that and working through problems, uh, et cetera. Anyway, so consistency of content, of launches, of offers, uh, of... of um, Maintenance of my business has been essential in keeping a very healthy, healthy lifestyle and income as well. Anyway, so those are the personal lessons. I also wanted to share with you the best of my content. Now, actually, before I get to the best of my content, I also wanted to share with you the courses that I launched this year. Very proud to have launched. Let me just see which launches I had this year. I'm pull, pulling it up. I have a list here. Um, I launched, uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm actually surprised. I, I only launched I only launched five courses this year. Uh, next year, I'm actually launching 12, believe it or not. But anyway, well, we will get there. And, and my consistency allows me to do it all very lightly. That's another lesson I continue to learn this year is doing everything with lightness. Everything with lightness. Like I, I already said before, nothing is a big deal. Nothing at all is a big deal. None of it really matters. It's all about the, it's all a stage for our personal and spiritual evolution. And so that's why I'm able to work lightly. I don't care if things fail or make a mis I make mistakes all the time. And But I just keep going. I just keep launching. I just keep showing up in front of you, no matter how much I embarrass myself. I just keep showing up. I work lightly because even embarrassing myself, I'm just a fool. You know, I'm a, I'm a fool for um, for God, for her. For the evolution of life, um, I'm just here to to play, uh, just as just as you are as well. Anyway, so I I only I'm surprised as, as I looked at this. I only launched five things this year, but thankfully they were all quite successful, 
the first launch in January was the course on authentic outreach. How do you fill your client roster with proven methods? So I love teaching that course. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's georgecow.com slash outreach to learn how to fill, how to get enough clients basically and plenty of clients using the methods that I teach, authentic methods. The second course, major course I taught this year was about AI, artificial intelligence, uh, things like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Dolly, um, and uh, and the various other you know AI, popular AI tools that came out this year. And one thing I'll say about this, um, and that was a very successful course. People loved it. People, you know, was they they had their work transformed by by using partnering with these tools. And one thing I'll say is not everyone watching this is a fan of AI. I understand uh, there are reasons to be concerned with AI, of course, and I'm very up on those reasons as well. But I really have seen, I mean, I'm a, I'm a realist. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And as a realist, I have observed that it's, it's far too convenient to go away. It's far too powerful to be uh to just fizzle out it is here to stay it is only going to get more powerful and more useful to the human beings who use it and to those who are who are avoiding it and sadly it's just falling behind uh what the what the modern tools are for creativity and for personal development as well so and yeah part of my ai course included several segments i had my guests some guest teachers teach about how using ai for personal growth reasons for spiritual growth, even you might say, doing guided meditations and all the, all those kinds of things that we create with the partnership of AI. Anyway, so AI is here to stay, and the way that I think we become continually valuable to the world as human beings, because AI is gonna AI is going to take over so much of our work. It's already taken over a lot of writing online. Uh, whether or not you think that's a good idea or not, it's, it has taken over. And it's going to take over video making as well because AI video is already human looking and definitely human sounding. It's very, very good human sounding already. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to make better videos than me in probably three years. So how do we as humans continue to stay valuable to society? And this is where I believe deeply in the profound importance of diving of exploring and diving into each of our unique energy signatures. We were born with a unique energy signature and it gets developed as we grow up, become adults. Hopefully we are given the space and the encouragement to explore and lean into our unique energy signature, which AI can try to emulate, but it never gets it quite right. I, I don't think it'll ever get it quite right because energy signature is not just the words we use and the face we have or whatever. So leaning into our authentic ways of expressing, powerfully expressing ourselves, if we know ourselves, if we le if we discover and lean into the fullness of our energy signature, something that I've done for practice for years, which is why I think a lot of you are watching my videos because of the unique energy signature. If we lean more into that, we become increasingly valuable to the world because of how we are expressing our unique our uniqueness so um anyway ai was another course i taught another course um, that i launched uh was about how do you describe your work the question that you sometimes get oh so what do you do what do you do for your work this course helps you to uh you know in a structured way to uh figure out how to describe your work in a compelling way in a resonant way, resonant with your energy signature and with your audience, and to do it in different formats, meaning a short bio, a you know thousand word about page, uh, or thousand character about page, and then a um, a video way of describing yourself. Anyway, so that was the describe yourself. What what do you do course? And then the next one I launched this year was on interview mastery. It was teaching you how to prepare for to be interviewed as a guest and also to interview others as well. And how do you get interviews? How do you get interviews as a guest? And how do you get great guests to be on, uh, to be interviewed by you? Uh, very uh, wonderful method I use all the time. And then finally, the last course I launched was called Launch Your Group Program, the 20-person method. 
And so this one was about, well, just like it sounds, those of you who say, well, maybe I need to move move beyond doing just one-to-one -one clients anymore. I want to run a small group program or a large group program that course uh, teaches the 20 person model. So starting with a 20 person group, which um, to some of you might sound large, some of you might sound small, but it's like a nice middle ground where it's like you can make three to 5,000 a month running a group program, 20 person group. And in that program, I you know kind of gave a structured process for how to design and launch that. Anyway, so th those are the courses I've launched this year. Now, let me talk about the best content that I created this year. I, I pulled up um, a couple of tabs and I will just go ahead and share my screen and show you on screen uh, the best content that I made this year. Okay, so um, I'll kind of start from, uh, I'll start from sort of the beginning of the year and kind of go more into the later in the year. So the beginning of the year, I made this post and about, um, and I will put the links to these below this video as well, why I decided to uncopyright all my content and it's true. Uh, all of my, at, the, at least my public content, the content that you can find from me on my website, my social media profiles and pages, my video channels, all of that is uncopyrighted. And what that means, uncopyrighted, is that um, anybody, you or anyone else, can feel free to take copy all of my words in the exact order. <laughs> you can literally take my articles and publish them as your own without mentioning my name at all and where it came from. It doesn't matter to me. It's uncopyrighted. You could you, you could take the entire article. You can take parts of it. You can you can take you know uh, yeah quotes, phrases, entire paragraph sentences, or the entire articles. All of my articles online, you can fully freely use it and repurpose it. Uh, say it exactly the way it is or, or change it or whatever. It doesn't matter. And I don't even have to know about it. I prefer not to know about it actually, because um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can feel free to do that. Uh, so uncopy I've, and I've uncopyrighted my stuff since 2014. So it's been uh, just about 10 years and um, I've, I've felt more liberated. I've never felt more liberated since I uncopyrighted my content. I don't, I don't worry anymore about people taking my stuff and taking my ideas. No, feel free humanity's progress, why not? And it just gives me more incentive to an urgency to create more ideas. Anyway, so that's that's one. I won't go through all of them in, in great detail, but that's that's a that's one that I really um I really uh, appreciated being able to share. Uh, why I change okay, this one. I'm sorry, it's every time it always loads here. Why I changed my mind about free versus paid content. The the basic gist of it is that I I used to think, oh, you know, I went through a very idealistic period uh during my uh, you know, spiritual trans transformation, like about 10, 11 years ago when I went through something and I said, oh, all content should be free. Nothing should be paid. And then I, over, over the years, I realized, wait a second, that completely invalidates all these teachers. So am I saying teachers should not be paid for their knowledge? That, that it increasingly sounded ludicrous to me. So no, no, no. Teachers deserve to be paid for their, you know, teaching for their knowledge for their research, their knowledge, their own sharing, their experiences, et cetera. So I said, no, teachers deserve to be paid. And so, no, there needs to be a distinction between free and paid knowledge. And so free free knowledge is more about the philosophy, the, the context setting, and the paid knowledge, in my opinion, should be more about the how-to, the hand-holding of students through a particular process, transform, transformational journey, something like that. The free is the more inspirational, aspirational, or context setting. The, the why and the what in terms of the overall map, things like that. Anyway, so that's that. Um, another um, uh, you know, effective piece of content I did this year was about not being afraid that you'll lose people when you are authentic online. When you're still exploring, of course, all of us are always exploring our energy signature and what it means to be courageous and vulnerable online. Um, and sometimes you'll lose people when you share certain opinions or where, when you tell certain stories and that's okay because you are leaning more and more into your authentic power. When you practice that kind of expression, that's much more important. And over time, as you do this, you will gather the people who actually resonate most with your energy signature. So that was, that was that. Um, another piece of content is about sustaining your social, how to be consistent on social media. 
right? And people people feel so tired when they think about that. Oh, social media is so tiring, got to show up all the time. And I said, wait a second, you're thinking of social media in a totally different way than me. I don't think of it as a chore. I don't think of it, oh, I got to show up. No, no, I think of it as an opportunity for me to keep exploring my energy signature, keep exploring what is truth true about my experience now or in the past or you know exploring my own values and my ideas it is an opportunity like none other because as you explore publicly on social media you also gather your kindred spirits people who resonate with some of your ideas and stories and your presence so um that's that was that one another one was about um oh this was a repeat of the past one that was very very successful which is about why you don't need a funnel why you meaning most of you who are watching this are authentic solopreneurs i don't have a funnel i don't think most of us need a funnel a funnel is very one dimensional it turns your audience into like widgets to push through a funnel just like it sounds and people often usually funnels don't work anyway i i mastermind with some very successful uh solopreneurs entrepreneurs who have teams and stuff and we keep saying again and again everyone's always surprised oh why are why is our funnel not working well it's because human beings are multifaceted complex creatures and if you push them through what you think they should go through in order to buy this and then buy that and then you know if they watch this and then they'll buy that it's just it's very one-dimensional and very stifling and very um you're treating them like objects versus the alternative is to think of your, well, I, anyway, I won't go through it because I'll put the link below, but the alternative is, a, is more of a organic um, strategy. If you want to call it that of adding value through content exploration of your energy signature, and then also gently inviting them into offers on a regular basis and noticing what works, but not having a necessarily funnel because sometimes you're most, you know, high, highest ticket offer, someone could have just discovered you and want to jump right into that without having to go through all the middle things. It happens more frequently than you might imagine. Okay, one more thing I'll say, and, and then I'll, I'll end this video. It's getting a bit long here, is um, this was also another effective piece of content I made this year, which is to, to stop being so uh, fixated on a particular sequence of what your content needs to be and just to be publishing more often because i've noticed when i create content and i've created so many you know, thousands of pieces of content i've created dozens of online courses i've noticed that as soon as i start thinking there must be this kind of sequence for me to to publish this one and then publish that one and then publish that one as soon as i start actually publishing i realize oh gosh i forgot that this was also important and this is that's the that's the nature of creativity when you put something out there, you learn from feedback and reactions, and you also learn from your own creative process to say, oh, gosh, there was even more than I thought. There was more complexity than I thought, or there was more simplicity than I thought. And so imagining that you have to you have to organize all your knowledge and, and have a perfect sequence and framework before you publish is, I think it's a fool's errand, or it's, it's, a, it's okay to be a fool. But it's 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 unrealistic, completely unrealistic. It's better to publish often, to publish your knowledge right away, whatever piece you have, right? That whatever piece you know right now, publish it because you're going to learn a lot in the creation and in the feedback of oh, what else is before this? What else is after this? Your your framework will just keep getting more and more robust over the years as you keep on putting imperfect and so-called messy things out there so anyway those are some of the the best pieces of content i made this year i hope this was helpful uh, i will put those links below and links to also to a playlist of my best ever videos as well for you to enjoy so thank you so much for being part of my audience i'm i'm grateful to to have had your viewership this year i'm really um really without your viewership i'm just talking to myself and so i'm really grateful to be able to work with you to play with you to receive your feedback whenever you you wish to and i always welcome your comments of course below i don't need your comments for the algorithm i don't care about that but i do care about your genuine reaction and genuine feedback to help me grow but also what is what you found most interesting about my videos as well so uh, thank you so much for being here I genuinely hope uh, that this was helpful and that all the content and courses I'm putting out there have been of service to, to many of you. 
So thank you again. And let's, uh, let's have hopefully another even better year together. Thanks so much.